There were so many interesting games played in round four of the Sinkfield Cup, but I'm going with this encounter. Richard Rapport from Hungary against Peter Svidler from Russia. Rapport's just 25 years old, but it feels like he's been on the scene for years. And there's a 20-year age gap. Peter Svidler, 45 years old. Incredible. So, Richard Rapport with the white pieces and... I've been saying this for some time. I think he's one of the most interesting players on the circuit. He is really creative. But actually, the first kind of slightly creative move comes from Peter Svidler with this move, knight d7. Now, it has been seen in in uh, a few games at the top level, but of course, it's unusual. The most normal moves here, simple development, knight f6 and, and c6 and bishop g4 or bishop f5. I mean, this is a standard system. Knight d7, a little bit unusual. Black would like to play e5, but of course white stops that with d4. And then the knight comes out to this square b6. I don't think it's the best square in the world. I mean, frankly, I find this uh, not a very attractive system for black, but it's been shown that it is playable by some of the strongest players in the world. a4. Well, that's logical. Push that knight, gain some space, so black should block with a5. And of course, normal moves here, bishop g2, whatever. But Rapport plays knight c3. And, you know, that is typical of his creative mind. Um, you know, in the past, we've we've seen things like b3 and playing bishop a3 or bishop g2 and, and playing for c4, you know, pretty standard stuff. But knight c3 is, looks very unusual, but there is something to this move because he would like to play the pawn to e4 and in, in, in that case, you know, gets an, a nice space advantage. So Svidler plays, of course, a normal move, knight f6. But e4 is still the idea. Bishop f5, so now three pieces controlling the e4 square. But Rapport continues with this idea, knight h4. So pushing that bishop out of the way still wants to get that break in e4, which would give white some advantage. So Svidler decides, right, it's not going to happen. I'm going to give up that bishop. But these two pawns and still the knight control the e4 square. So very hard to imagine how white is going to get that break in. In the meantime, you know, a move that white would like to make to try to increase the scope of this bishop is advance the pawn to c4. But with the knight on c3, that's not possible. So at the moment, it looks a little bit strange from Rapport's point of view. And I would say here, just at first glance, that Svidler is doing absolutely fine. Bishop b4. So a little bit of pressure here. Um, again, the, the knight controls this square. Very hard to imagine that white is doing anything here, but watch what happens now. And I suspect that Rapport's strategy uh, came as something of a surprise to Svidler. Knight d1. What on earth is this about? Well, just watch, because this is actually a really nice regrouping of white's pieces. f3. It's interesting that he's not pushing this bishop yet. And one of the points is that if black tries to break in the centre with c5, then c3 traps that bishop. So in other words, before black gets in this move, he's got to retreat the bishop. So this slows down black's counterplay or potential counterplay in the middle. Rook e8, sensible move on the semi-open file, knight f2. So a very nice regrouping from White's point of view. At the moment, you know, this bishop looks terrible, blocked in by the pawn. And yet you can see that these pieces have all lined up beautifully and e4 starts to become a possibility for White. Sorry, there's a lot of paint on the board there, but uh, hope, hopefully you get the idea. This is White's idea. If White can break open the position, then that bishop will uh, breathe again. And of course, it has no opponent, this light squared bishop. So that's the big idea. 
queen e6, some pressure here. But just bishop g5. Now here, Svidler could simplify with queen takes pawn. Now, queen takes pawn, who's better here? Well, maybe white's a bit better because this queen could be expelled with bishop f1 or maybe just the queens will be exchanged and those bishops give white some advantage. But of course, the, the game is kind of a lot calmer. But Svidler decided, well, there's nothing wrong with his position. Knight c4 looks very attractive, looking at the pawn here, but also potentially looking to play the knight into e3. c3 pushes the bishop back. And here, you know, what? well, what do you do as white? Uh, two pawns attacked. The obvious move is b3, but then the knight comes in here. That's rather an unpleasant blockade. Um, and black must be fine there. But Rapport had clearly anticipated this position and played rook e1, defending the pawn and further supporting this advance e4, just allowing this pawn to be taken. By the way, if black, excuse me, in this position, so rook e1 just played, if black blockades with knight e3, then of course that pawn can be taken. Still, still slightly unclear position, but Obviously, taking that pawn is, is uh, nice for white. So, rook e1 just played, and Svidler decided, fine, I'm taking a pawn. And the knight comes back to a really nice square. It can't be pushed away. But for that pawn, Rapport has managed to get it. His move e4. Now, as I looked at before, if everything is exchanged on this square, then that looks like a lot of fun for white. Suddenly this bishop is liberated, the rooks look good, all the white's pieces look good. Um, white, well, at the very least, has a very nice compensation there. So I think, understandably, Svidler wanted to keep the position to some extent closed. h6, putting the question to the bishop. So at least he gets rid of one of those bishops. Now, instead of taking a pawn, which would actually uh, just, yeah, not, I mean, not very good for all kinds of reasons, actually. I mean, not, not least the knight hopping into to e3. But in any case, it just doesn't feel right. e5 has to be the move anyway. So this pawn, as we see so often with kingside attacks, this pawn on e5 is kind of a spearhead. And white uses that space try and roll down the board and here we go f4 so white's still a pawn down but now that bishop working here and potentially working on this diagonal as well and the idea is simply to give up another pawn potentially um, g4 and then push with f5 so h5 stops that but i mean it's debatable whether black should be including these moves because of course after this it sort of opens up the king side a little bit more. But this is already a difficult position. Um, Svidler played g6. You could go for Carol to play with c5. I mean, something similar happens in the game. Uh, it's just very double-edged, but it's unpleasant. White center might be under a bit of pressure here, but suddenly it's black's king that's in trouble. And, well, the stakes are raised for black. If black gets it slightly wrong, he gets his head blown off. Whereas for white, well, you know, white's strategy is easy. He's attacking. But for black, defense is not simple. g6, g4. And again, black could, you know, you could play something like this, c6, just to try and hold this position. But it's not simple. You know, after these pawns are damaged, then they are permanently weak. Um, it's very hard to know what the best defense for black is in this position. You know, eventually this pawn is, is going to drop somehow. This bishop will come to one of these diagonals. So uh, g4 plate, h6, g4, f takes. Now you can't push straight away, but simple move, queen d1. Just trying to collect this pawn. Now, it's possible to play like this. 
but this is still a very attractive position for white for example like this um, you know, f5 is, is coming sooner or later. Very hard to defend this. Svidler played g3. Knight g4. There we go. Knight coming to a, to a great square. Bishop g7 protects. Bishop h3. Watch out. Discovered trouble here. And queen b6. I mean, it's, it's interesting. The computer still thinks that black is okay in this position. Um, if queen e7. But defending against this looks absolutely terrifying. In the game, queen b6 played. Queen d3, Svidler looking for counterplay in the middle, but that is a thin hope. And from this moment on, it really is just full steam ahead for white on the king side. It is impossible to defend this. f6, pawn takes pawn. Uh, Rapport kept it very simple and simply recaptured with a pawn here. You could... You could actually take the bishop. Let me show this line because it's it's quite attractive. Pawn takes, and if knight takes, um, well, I mean, everything is winning here. Well, maybe not everything. Knight f6, that can be taken, but actually you can play queen takes rook with the idea pawn takes, knight check, and a fork. That's quite an attractive line. I mean, of course, black has some alternatives, but anyway, f takes g7 is, is also looks good. Um, but this is really simple. You know, Rapport has a very clear winning idea in this position, and that is just to go for the king. Knight h6. So really well played. Um, obviously, king here, knight takes, uh, crashes through. Actually, let me just show that very quickly because it leads to a forced mate. That bishop playing its role here, controlling this square. So in the game, knight h6, bishop takes, queen takes, threatening mate, knight takes. Well, there's simply no defense or no decent defense anyway. Queen check, bishop g2. And the best that black has is to exchange off into an utterly hopeless endgame where white is a whole bishop up. So in this position, Svidler resigned. Well... I, I mean, it looks if you know if you play through that game just without too much analysis, then it looks like Rapport's attack is just kind of route one, completely direct, and Black didn't defend very well. But as I said, it's very difficult to defend against this kind of rolling attack, and I think we shouldn't underestimate the kind of surprise value of Rapport's strategy. Knight c3, unusual. Um, this whole idea with knight d1, I mean, to, to get from this position and then playing these kind of moves and then suddenly, you know, a few moves later you manage to get in e4, well, this is fantastic. And no wonder Svidler was just completely discombobulated in this game, actually. So Richard Rapport does it again. I mean, he has big swings. Um, you know, he was on he was on one out of three. Um, but, well, now he's hit back. He's he's back on two out of four. Let me just look at the standings. So we have three players on three points. Dominguez, Caruana, and So on three points. Vashti on two and a half. Richard Rapport and Shahriya Mamadyarov on two points. Actually, there was some really entertaining games. Let me just show you the, the finish of Svich against Sion. Svich played a superb game, actually. Really nice attack. Here, white play. How do you win? Well, he played rook takes bishop. Pawn takes. Okay, I'll just give you a moment to try and work this out. White to play and win. How do you finish off? The secret of good technique is good calculation. B4 check. Really nice move. Just simplifying down. If queen takes... Queen a2 check, and that reaches a winning pawn endgame. Pawn goes through, and in the game, after b4, king takes b4. Again, queen e7, 
reaches a winning pawn endgame. Very neat tactic. I really like those simplifications down to uh, a simpler winning endgame. So there we go. Um, thanks very much for watching. Um, just to let you know that uh, the chess base deal of the week, my entire collection of power play dvds and downloads that you can have them as downloads as well is available that's 1 to 28 there's hundreds of hours worth of material there looking at openings middle games and end games it is chess based deal of the week it represents a massive sailing so, uh, saving do check out the link in the comments and in the video description um i'm really proud of that series a lot of people like it, so do check it out if you're interested in more detailed instruction, if you want to improve your chess. I think that's all for now. Thanks for watching.